Please welcome Emilio Mascarpelli. Today, they have a speech that talks about a speech that I was going to talk about today. And we always apologize. Now, this is how I was feeling before, whenever thinking about giving a speech. In my mind, I couldn't even conceive the idea of giving a speech. And I started to think about this one day when I said to myself, what would I do in ideal circumstances with my life if I could choose? I said, well, the ideal life would be for me traveling the world, speaking in public, and making a living out of that, right? The ideal. It was something telling me, you're not that. Don't fool yourself. You're not a speaker. I kept hearing this voice. So there it was, my biggest dream, standing right in front of my biggest fear, like held by the fear, like a hostage. So I said, I'd rather let this go. Forget about this wild dream of mine. Just uh, stop wasting my time. Or, I should just go for it, pursue it, and just beat whatever is, is holding me back. And the first choice, well, it's easy. I just can let it go and do something else. But what would I do anyway? Being uncomfortable and do what I love? Well, I chose that. Being uncomfortable and just go for what I want. So this is how fellow members and guests I started my journey in Toastmasters. This is how I met Toastmasters. And I'm in the process of getting started. Several years ago, 1950s, 1960, there was this uh, renowned plastic surgeon. He described a very interesting thing about his practice. He said <coughs> that a surgeon not only works on a man's face, but he also alters a man's inner self. Why? He shared the reason why. He said, he shared part of his practice. He said how many clients have walked into his consultation with all these uh, unworthiness thoughts about themselves, just feeling ugly, wanting to change something in their lives, and they thought about changing their exterior. It's like uh, solving some internal scar external scars by solving some sorry solving some internal scars to solve some external scars or vice versa. But it took some like 21 days total for the patient to come back like totally renovated, rehabilitated of the self worth after they they become like prettier, let's say. They, they started to find themselves like more worthy of relationships. They couldn't even before go to a job interview. That's how they felt about themselves. But the surgeon noticed also that that was not the only determining factor. Some people just never changed. Some people became miserable and remained miserable. So the surgeon said, it's not really about the, the external change, the thing. Some people remain the same. Some people become confident and remain confident. So there's he observed like there's some other he called face of the personality that was the thing that changed really. That thing he called the face of the personality is the one in charge of for a person if they change, you can change your whole life. The surgeon's name was Maxwell Maltz. And his book that I also recommended, Psycho Cybernetics. With his book he revolutionized the concept of self-image in the history of psychology. He described it in a very interesting way. He said, if a plane takes off from London to New York, right? The pilot sets up the destiny, let's say the GPS, let's call it, takes off and puts the automatic pilot. So the plane is going to go straight to New York. Unless 
there's some unpredictable, uh, unpredictable turbulence where the plane deviates a bit. But ultimately, it will reach the destination. But the plane has these deviating mechanisms. As soon as the plane gets out of course, the mechanisms will pick that signal up and put the plane right on course back to its destination. So he compared the mechanisms with the personality, with the self-image. He said, unless you adjust that, you will s still get the same destination, which are the results. That's the only way you can just uh, restructure yourself in order to change results in your life. Unless this doesn't happen, it won't happen. He said that you cannot outperform your self-image. Whatever is set there is going to get you through what is set. Unless you change the mechanism, you're still going to get the same thing. The self-image is the overriding authority for everything you will ever become, ever try to reach, ever do. So the secret is to re-engineer who you believe you are. That's the only way to do it. That's what I tried to do in the beginning. I was with this terror barrier in front of me, not being able to, to overcome this about speaking in public. It was not about the speaking, really. It was about the standing here, the thing. So unless you beat that and you re-engineer, you say, I'm not, because I, I used to say, I'm not that person. I never reconsidered. Really when I asked myself what would be the ideal life, I considered it. And now is aiming for that, so I started, to feel, I started to feel the terror. Unless you change that of who you believe you are now that I say I am that person, it won't happen. And the last takeaway would be just aim for what you want. Study your surroundings. Study your nature, your ancestors, your passions. Because those contain the key of what you're meant to be here. Whether it's that it's set already or not, you're totally in control to set it up again. Not until Smash.